hello my name is Sana if you are new here today I'm just chilling I'm with my Marie weighted plushie and I have a warm tea so get yourself a nice cup of something warm uh, this is actually a mug that I made uh, I hand painted it and my cousin got it for me for Christmas so I've been using it in London and today I want to talk to you a little bit about something I didn't tell anyone on the internet I was doing. So for those who don't know, I go to this very non-traditional university called Minerva and the way that it works is that we spend different or each semester in a different country, in a different city around the world. And I'm currently a senior, about to graduate in May. That's a whole other story and a stress, but I'm going to take you right back to the beginning of my final year, my senior year. It was September or August, I guess you could say. I was in my Disney internship era and I was loving it there. And I knew that I had to move in September. Move where, you may ask? Well, I moved to Taipei in Taiwan and I didn't really want to go. The truth is I was really craving stability and comfort and the last thing I wanted to do was move to a foreign country where I didn't speak the language, I didn't know anyone, and I didn't know what the currency was like, what the food was like, I just... that wasn't what I wanted at the time. Minerva is so much fun and I'm so grateful that I chose to attend this university and I wouldn't change it for the world. That being said, I was exhausted and I felt really guilty for not wanting to travel anymore. So what did I do? I messaged an upperclassman who I knew had felt sort of similarly and I asked her what she did um, to approach it and it really really helped me. So I'm thinking with sharing my experience traveling at Minerva even though I wasn't really wanting to anymore um, I could help someone out there who might be feeling the same or just kind of open your eyes to uh, a possibility when you're pursuing a degree like mine that is very unconventional. I realized that what was most important to me was to complete the Minerva rotations and that ultimately I wasn't gonna miss out on any of the cities just because I was tired. So I went in with zero expectations. I kind of just let myself go and see what would happen. I didn't put any pressure on myself to experience the culture or to travel around. I really just decided I'm gonna go live my life and I will just happen to be in Taiwan. Something else that came along with that was not really being sure about how to present my life online. And so from end of August to pretty much December or January, I want to say, I really wasn't active on any social media, YouTube, Instagram, and I really kept where I was to myself, my closest family members and obviously my classmates. There were a lot of people in my life that had no idea where I was and I was okay with that. I kind of just wanted to disappear and uh, be by myself. But uh, you know what? It actually went pretty well. I am going to do a three-part series. I think it'll be three. I did film a few times while I was in Taiwan. Um, just for myself at the time, I really didn't think I would upload it. And every time that I did film, I maybe it was because I had like a burst of inspiration and I thought, oh, okay, I'll go back to YouTube. But I just never, I never really felt like getting online again. It was too scary. I feel like the weight of the world was so heavy um, throughout the the last months and there was so much going on politically as well that I just, the internet made me sad, truly, and social media was not a place that I went to in general. I didn't scroll, I didn't really talk to people, but I do think I'm ready to share. So one of the things that I was super, super lucky to get was a single room. We actually all of us, all of my class had a single room and that's because we are such a small class. So because of the pandemic and just people dropping out, uh, our class went 
from initially I think it, we were 150 we were already pretty small to begin with and then we went down to about 100 students in Taiwan um, not everyone went as well and we were only 60 or so which meant that we had a huge residence that they had rented and very few students so they gave us all single rooms which was such a luxury and something that makes a huge difference in your experience having space to yourself being able to just kind of have your own little routine not get in the way of a roommate have control over your space it really meant a lot to me and i put in a lot of effort to decorate it and make it cozy because i knew going into the semester that my room was going to be a really safe space and a, a space that i would want to spend a lot of time in so i actually uh, decorated it probably the best out of no definitely the best out of any minerva dorm we've ever had and I actually do have a dorm makeover video. Um, so that should be one of the parts of this little series. I will be uploading them kind of as bonus videos between all the other content I do. So uh, there isn't a schedule or anything for that, but click the bell if you want to be notified when I upload a new video and uh, make sure to give it a like below to let me know that you're interested or comment if you want me to to share that with you because if you're not interested then I won't um, I'll just keep it for me but um, yeah I have that recorded but overall I had a really peaceful life um, I used the bikes a lot uh, U bikes I also had bubble tea like nearly every day um, <laughs> not always with pearls um, but just like iced teas and um, I just really soaked that in because it was so cheap to purchase and I know in Canada and in SF it's like ten dollars for a bubble tea so to have boba at the tip of your fingers for like a dollar it was beautiful and then I also took a lot of walks um, there was this beautiful green park in front of our residence and I would walk around there a lot um, there were little turtles it was the cutest thing ever um, there were also just like so much so many beautiful days with blue skies i think our class was so lucky that the semester we went it honestly very rarely rained it's not very normal for taipei i was so grateful that it was just such beautiful weather and such beautiful circumstances and then i think the best part of taiwan was having access to the national taiwanese university's campus so in Taipei we are actually partnered with the university and it was so wonderful because NTU has so many beautiful libraries, green spaces, they have a cafeteria that has really inexpensive vegetarian food and a lot of other foods along you know throughout the campus um, but it was just incredible. We had access to um, courses if we wanted to to take any of the local courses um, as long as they were in English, not in Mandarin. Um, but we could do that and we could also join a team, like a sports team or any sort of club if we wanted to. So there's just a lot to do. It was more like a normal university life, which I really appreciated. Um, I actually also, other part, spoiler, um, of this little series, I have a sort of day or morning in my life in Taiwan where I go to the university. Um, but I did want to ask if or like what your thoughts are on a really 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 long vlog because the footage I imported is over an hour and I think that the vlog is going to be at least 30 minutes to like 45 50 it's gonna be long so I just want to know if that's something you're interested in um, or if you want me to cut it down super short um, what do you think is like a reasonable time frame for a vlog? Uh, I'd love to know. Those are some of the pieces of footage I've gathered. Uh, and then just to pop on to the end of this video, I wanted to share uh, one of my first experiences in Taipei, which was Exploration Day. We um, have it in almost every single city where we are given like challenges and tasks to explore the new environment that we're in. So uh, the student life team tends to organize these little events. Uh, they'll make us, I guess, find certain items in the city or go to certain locations and take a photo, that kind of thing. And I do actually have some footage from that experience. So I'll uh, lead you right into that. 
but thank you so much for watching um, enjoy my short little exploration day montage and uh yeah i'll see you very very soon bye Expiration day. I've had a pretty chill morning. I was supposed to be productive and I really wasn't. But we're gonna go have fun. I swear to pay a little bit. It's part of like our university's orientation tradition to do this little exploration at the start of every semester to get to know our city. So I'm gonna go do that with my little team. Hopefully we win. Um, and I'll, I'll just take you along all the things we do. It'll probably be one of the days where I see like the most of Taipei in a very like condensed period. So. I'm sure it'll be fun, but yes, we leave really soon. This morning I just had like a matcha really slowly, um, called my boyfriend, just did everything really slow, but I think I needed it, so let's get going. Looking at Georgie's oh. homework. <laughs> That's not what I meant. But I'm sure. also waiting for bus 302, which is not showing. Which is here. Oh, okay. here we go. Internal, would you like to describe the mission at hand? <laughs> the mission at hand is to find plants or flowers that represent our university journey. Oh, okay. It's a hard one. Oh. Okay, you have to describe now. What the vine is? Well, <laughs> <laughs> because I feel like I've branched out a lot. Hmm. That's a good one. That is a good one. You have to tell me now why. Oh, because it's pretty. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can say seven countries. <laughs> yes. It's a hibiscus because I got one tattooed on my wrist before I left home, and then on my first day here, I always put one in my hair, and so I feel like it's about old things taking on new meanings. Oh. So this hydrangea finesis. <laughs> Let's call it that. Whatever it says there. Represents her in every journey because it is like super small and there's lots of them. And I feel like all my memories are sometimes little and very like casual and not, I guess, like the most um, grand, but they all accumulate to make this like beautiful memory wall for years. <laughs> to be able to get it out. <laughs> Yes. He's doing some dark mm -hmm. magic. We need like... to get home to do everything else. Oh, your face is so red. I know, it's because of the light. Do you of want the some car. different lighting, Riley? Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, red. Please. It's so sexy. Red, queen. Red doesn't look sex on me, it's not my color. <laughs> I gave you the spotlight. I think it's a good view. <laughs> she did. It was a bit blinding. 